where ideas are born and friendships are made. These 10 days have probably been much more and much more knowledgeable than, than a whole year at a university. Young people seeking knowledge and understanding. Reach for the stars. You know, we are all human and we are all living in the same planet and we should uh, share. We will build the ideas and attitudes that will shape the future. Have you heard what Tron Time are doing? We should be doing that. Every day, full schedule, interesting conversations, uh, and at night, yeah, we, we, we have time to uh, get to know all the participants. I think everything we do is so much fun, and they give us no time for, like, to, to even breathe. One of the most exciting and vital meeting places in the world. And there should be more initiatives like this. I don't want, I, I don't want it to end. <laughs> and we get there to a cabin surrounded by just snow and mostly nothing else. One of the best uh, days in uh, in my life. <laughs> Some have never seen uh, the desert. Uh, we gather 400 students from over 100 countries. are heard. That's okay with me, cause I'm overjoyed what, what is it? and ready for that. remember more than a year before the festival started, we dreamt of having Desmond Tutu as our opening speaker. Honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the opening ceremony of the International Student Festival in Trondheim, 2009. ISFITS is the world's largest international student festival. It's arranged every odd year and about 450 students from all over the world attend this year's festival. ISFITS is a thematic festival always related to social and political topics of international relevance. This year's main topic is peace building. Every boat needs a captain, and in this very hall, the internationally oriented students of Trondheim elect Ves, the ISFIT leader. The president of this year's festival is from Hemsedal. He is 24 years old, and he championed peace building as this year's topic in an effort to return to the very roots of the ISFIT ideas during this 10th festival in the series. Please give a warm welcome to ISFIT president Trygve Torsson. ISFIT is, uh, in my opinion, first and foremost, a meeting place. 
Uh, we gather 400 students from over 100 countries. I'm Lucas from Poland. I'm from Turkey. I'm Himakshi from India. I'm from Pakistan. Palestine. Indonesia. Ghana. I'm from New York. For 10 days here in Trondheim, we do believe that the students that are here are potential leaders of tomorrow, that they uh, have a potential to develop their ideas and set the ideas that they develop here into practice. These are very special students. They're smart, they're willing to be empathic and pragmatic. My name is Fatima, I'm from Sudan. A lot of people from Africa, from Asia, from China, from Philippines, you know. I'm Hali from the Philippines and I'm from Finland. With this one we create an arena where they can meet, discuss, debate, get to know each other, build a network and develop ideas. Dear fellow students, dear honorable guests, welcome to the 10th International Student Festival in Trondheim. Welcome to ISFIT 2009. In November 1989, the Berlin Wall fell. Five months later, this hall was packed with students from both sides. Trondheim was one of the first cities where students from Eastern and Western Europe met. On April 17, 1990, the first ISFIT was opened. Here at ISFIT, we are not representatives of a country or a government. We are not representing a religion or a political ideology. At ISFIT, we are first and foremost students. Dear participants, thank you for being here. Thank you for coming all this way to snowy and cold and dark Trondheim in the middle of the Norwegian winter. Thank you for sharing your time, your thoughts and your experience with us. And dear volunteers, without you, ISFIT would never be possible. I sincerely hope you enjoy this moment. This, this is it. Hello. <laughs> that was not a, a very enthusiastic. Uh, <laughs> hello. hello. Now let's welcome the people who have come from other parts of the world uh, to be part of this wonderful, wonderful uh, event here in uh, Trondheim. All of you have come from how about more than a hundred uh, nations, is it? More than a hundred nations. Just think of it, that in the room here uh, we have people who speak at least a hundred different languages. Isn't that something? <laughs> Let's clap those people who have come, yes. Now I want to tell you, you might not have ever thought about this, that you are fantastic people. Do you know that? <laughs> I mean, I know that sometimes when you look in the mirror, uh, you, are, you, are, you are shocked um, <laughs> at what you see in front of you. Um, you. You know, I mean, that there are people who are called VIPs. You know, VIP. Uh, when you go to an airport, if you're a VIP, you don't stand in a long line. They fetch you, maybe they fetch you in a car when everybody else goes in a bus and they go and stand in a long line, VIP. <laughs> now, <clears throat> we may not all be VIPs, but we are all VSPs. Huh? 
very special person. So, <laughs> no man, no, no. It's, it's a lousy clap. You really, I mean, we're talking about very special people. Come on, now let's hear him say it. Young people such as yourselves are fantastic in so many parts of the world. Young people are idealistic. They dream. They dream about a better world. They dream about a world where we will share. Just imagine how much do we spend on arms. Billions, billions. And we know that a small fraction of those budgets would ensure that children everywhere in the world, everywhere, would have enough water to drink, would have enough food to eat, homes, good health. Children die today because they can't get any inexpensive inoculation. And, and we spend money on things that destroy life. Imagine. And you young people are saying, for goodness sake, let's, let's begin to think differently about ourselves. And you have come together. You come to celebrate and, and to dream, to dream, to dream about a world where there is no longer war. Why should there be war? You know, as I look at you, obviously, yes, I'm looking and I'm seeing future prime ministers. I'm seeing future professors. I'm seeing people who are going to find, uh, to discover cures for HIV and AIDS. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I come back in five, ten years time, I want, I will say to you, you remember, you remember? <laughs> yeah? A few years ago we were in, in Bali, uh, there were three Nobel Peace Laureates uh, with about, I think, 300 young people. And they asked me, hello, hello, Archbishop Tutu, yes. Uh, what did you do, what must you do to win a Nobel Peace Prize? <laughs> I said, oh, very easy, very easy, very easy. You need only three things. You need three things. You must have a big nose. <laughs> Two, you must have an easy name. <laughs> Tutu. <laughs> and because it was warm there, we were, we, I was in shorts. I said, and three. And I showed off my legs. I said, you must have sexy legs. <laughs> <laughs> All I was saying is, anybody, if a Desmond Tutu can win the Nobel Peace Prize, anybody can win the Nobel Peace Prize. And so, why not? Why shouldn't there be Nobel Peace Prize, Peace Prize winners here? Why shouldn't there be people who are going to make discoveries that are going to make life better for their fellow human beings? Why not? I look at you and I see some fantastic human beings. Reach for the stars. Reach for the stars. Hey? Aim for the top, for the sake of all of us. And God has no one 
except you. You and you and you and you and you and you. Goodbye. Yes. <laughs>
permission, what happens to Iran's seat before the United Nations the next day? In Missoula, so that This small example shows how regressive our laws are compared to the culture of our society. So the full victory of women means removing discrimination against all women and paving the way for de true democratization. And that is why women who fight for the equality of rights in every society are at the forefront of the democratization process in those societies. And undemocratic governments always find their most fearful opponents in the ranks of women. That is why it is essential for international organizations to give the utmost attention to the issue of the equality of women and their rights in every society so that by paving the way for the achievement of their rights, they can democratize all across the world. Rather than dropping democracy with cluster bombs over the heads of nations, they can assist women in every society to achieve their true rights. Let us not forget that democracy is a, not a gift that you can hand over to a nation. Democracy is not an event that can happen overnight. Democracy is a historical process that must mature, and in this process, the role of women is undeniable. The victory of women can shorten the path towards democracy. I wish women all over the world true victory, and thank you for your patience listening to me tonight. Why are Muslim women only in few countries feel troubled? If I compare a woman from Indonesia, uh, I cannot compare Indonesian woman to an Afghan woman and a Saudi Arabian woman. Is it something to do with the Muslim men in these communities, how they think about uh, interpretation of Islam about women? And with these two questions, I conclude. Thank you, ma'am. It's a honor to have you here. I pointed in my talks that the root cause of all of these issues and concerns is the patriarchal culture. And it is the patriarchal culture that defines religion in such a manner that is incompatible with the achievement of equal rights. Perhaps my claim is that overall women are the same everywhere, having rights or not having them. Uh, does not make so much difference. What do you think about the relationship, again, between having rights and being happy? My dear friend, you ask a very good question. In the, uh, the question was, is, does a person who has rights necessarily happy as well? And my response is, no, a person who has rights is not necessarily happy. But I'm confident about one thing. A person who doesn't have rights is definitely unhappy. Uh, dear uh, uh, Dr. Abadi, uh, I am, uh, my name is Ivan. I'm from Norway and I am a male student and uh, <laughs> politician. Yeah. Uh, my question is what could I do to? Um, help women to get equal rights uh, also in my society? That's my question. Uh, okay, good question. Thank you. You must respect women in the same manner you respect yourself. When you're giving women their rights, sometimes people assume that they're making a favor. They're not making a favor here, they're just giving them their rights. So say if you want to become a politician, I'll tell you, don't do favors for women, just give them their rights, please. Global Fiesta is a great 
theme party that we uh, arrange at Monday night at Isfit. It's a night where we celebrate the cultural diversity at Isfit and where all the participants can dress up in their national costumes. It's a sari, it's the national costume of Indian women. And this suit, is this your national? Yes. Yeah? Yes. And they are dancing, they are sharing their cultures and they are sharing what they have. And nobody shaming on this. This is pretty important. Yeah, I am this and you are this and you know we can be together this is very important at the participant stage all the participants can perform traditional uh, dances songs poems whatever from their country or just things that i like to perform Because it's visual and it's more and it's more bam right there in front of your eyes. Uh, work seventh, uh, film and photo. Mm -hmm. Practically, we discuss about some topics related to peace. There's a focus on peace and the relation, the correlation between peace and how how photo can, uh, and film can make a change. And, that, and I was very, very amazed by that. How to control or work? Uh, what's the, are the limits uh, to handle a picture or to ma or to manipulate? Uh, let's, for example, in newspapers and photojournalists, and also in movies. When film is manipulated and when images are manipulated appropriately, I think that the mind, because the mind is so selective, the mind can. Uh, the mind can see this as a uh, as something more effective than, for example, a book, because it's visual and it's more and it's more bam right there in front of your eyes. We talk about the power of the image, and so what are our, our responsibilities in promote or produce these pictures? Also, because our society is working now and is uh, working on image, we are our sensibility is very, how I can say, we are very sensitive about all the message that are arriving by TV, by movie, by with the publicity and everything. So we are very uh, sensitive at this. Actually, um, we had an exhibition at the Symphonet and we, the goal was to show a picture, uh, we had two pictures each. To show a picture before what, what what was the meaning of peace before uh, coming here, mm -hmm. and now what is the meaning of peace building? And so I think there are very interesting things, and I think some many ideas have changed. By my part, yeah, it, it has changed. It, the, the discussions, the little groups helped me out to develop more my ideas yeah. about peace building. Oh, well, my first picture is about inner peace. Because I think peace starts in the inner of a person. Then the second one it's about a conflict that is taking my country, which is racist. We have a lot of it, and uh, before after East Fit, I want to be part and promote uh, to get rid of racism, which is something that is destroying us and make us. Uh, and make a division in my country. People from the West and people from the East, they are against each other. 
On Saturday, Workshop 7 had a visit from the artist and street photographer Neely Yosha. Many of the participants in the workshop dream of working as a photographer, and Yosha's encouraging words were quite inspirational. We primarily, as I said, we use visuals, and uh, we've, we've, had, we've had quite uh, productive sessions in the workshops, and I'm very happy. I'm particularly happy about the fact that I've, I've, I've come to know all the people from different cultures, people from, two people from Israel, mm. people from the United States, people from Germany, from France, from Asia, everywhere. So it's, it's a very unique uh, melting pot of culture, how they perceive the world. Film director Barbara Capisti from Italy visited Workshop 7 to talk about her work and her latest film, which is one of the films shown during the festival. The movie uh, is Forbidden Childhood, Forbidden Dreams is a movie about a non-violent movement, a non-violent uh, resistant, resistance in Israel and Palestine, working to teach how to deal with this kind of violence that every day is down, is in the street. How difficult it is to be non-violent in that situation, because for us it's very simple to say we are peacemaker or we are uh, against any kind of violence, because we live in different country, and we don't know what violence is. I know that we can do a lot with our job for peace. We can do a lot, because when, when you are honest and when you and you are able to, to show the reality how it is. I think that our movie, photographers and movie directors, filmmakers can do a lot, really a lot for this. Because no one, do you know, we can give the possibility to the normal people, to the common people to have their own ideas. An important aspect of this video is also to to integrate the city of Trondheim and the participants. And uh, we tried to link the participants and the local population in various ways. Uh, for instance, the ISFIT participants stay at hosts while they are here. The wonderful people of Trondheim have said uh, all of the students from overseas, we don't want them to go and stay in hotels, we don't want them to go and stay in hostels. We don't want them to go and stay in dormitories. We want them to come and live with us in our homes. And so we want to say a very big thank you to the people of Trondheim, not just for their welcome to ISFIT, but for their generosity in extending their hospitality to those who have come from overseas. Let's give them a clap too. So they stay at tr the families in Trondheim and students of Trondheim that open their homes for the participants during the festival. I'm learning Norwegian. Oh, from yeah, you. from my host family. I can now earn in, two, re, fire, fem. We had a whole day dedicated to the communication between the local students and the ISFIT participant the first day which we named On Common Ground yes. and that's the title of the whole day and the idea is that you let students from uh, Trondheim uh, meet students from all over the world. We try to open ISFIT to the public and that is the idea so uh, it has been uh, uh, arrangements all over town today. Mm. Uh, I've just been to Dragol uh, okay. and uh, joined the opening of the peace conference there. And we also had this role play starting up mm. there. Let God stand the education for all. On this project day, the first ISFIT book, called Voices of Tomorrow, was released. The book focuses on conflicts and peace-building processes. It contains a selection of essays written by international students and recognized professionals. The book also reflects on Norway's approach to peace-building. In Forum Theatre, a group of actors performed a play, introducing a few characters and their conflicts. Then the audience was encouraged to take the stage and participate in developing a theatrical debate in which experiences and ideas are rehearsed and shared, 
creatively generating both solidarity and a sense of empowerment. Among the other things you could experience at ISFIT on February the 26th were World Cafe, Speed Dating and Buto Workshop, held by the Japanese Buto artist Ken Mai. What is a human? And what is the life? What do you want to do in the future? Buto artist Ken Mai. We did a lot of exercise, mm -hmm. image and uh, physical training and the movement. <laughs> Basically, you need training, physical training and mind training. Later the same evening, Ken Mai also did a dance performance at Klubben. So, Buton is for me one part of art and life. Also need to create movement and peace. Creation is very, I think, important to use, which we don't do so much. Artists, of course, they use many creation, but other people more into high technology, like computer. You better not follow only computers. It's important to see the human's fundamental in human's connection mm. and the nature. And how important is the ancestors, our ancestors, who died, your grandmother, grandfather. That's why I'm here, past and present and future. And think about this contemporary society. This is a right or wrong. What is a human? And what is the right? What do you want to do in the future? It is okay to follow this society? Computer, computer, and busy, busy, busy. Is this right? Walls with Bashir was one of the movies that were shown during Isfit and it's a, it's a movie that is directly relevant for our theme. Uh, the movie is made by a former Israeli soldier and is reflecting his views on the war in Lebanon. We follow the soldier in his post-war period where, he, uh, where all the memories from the war is coming back to him. It's a very strong movie which affects our thoughts and our, uh, our emotions. And it shows us both what war can do with people, with the soldier and his friends, and also how it affects the local population. Uh, I think the Burma VJ movie uh, was, was extremely touching. Uh, particularly because of the technical side of it, because it was filmed in, uh, in a unique way. It was, it was collected from footage. It was, very, it was very realistic and very powerful and very frightening about how, how the situation is there. Many films related to peace building were shown during the festival. Among them were War Child, The Rainbow Maker, Akamas and Forbidden Childhood. Himakshi from India. I'm in workshop 14, Developments for Migration. We went for uh, an outdoor project, like it was a role play which we did. We all acted as migrants, so that was like a really good experience so that we could actually know what migrants feel like. And then today we had a discussion about human rights and migration which all actually got heated and we realized that these issues have no solution but still we need to think about them and do as good as we can. Every 10-15 minutes I get to talk to another people from a different country and then when we talk we get to know about each other's culture and situations which is really good. In next days I'm looking forward to of course skiing. I've never skied before in my life and I've never been in such a cold place so I'm looking forward to tomorrow and going around Trondaham. Of course discussing more about my workshop and knowing more people. When I get home, of course, I'll tell my friends about it. And we have conferences in our college also where we discuss this. So I will go back and 
like whole uh, like meeting where I could tell people about my experiences and about the change in me and the thoughts I've learned here. Make the eleven again, yeah. Uh, right now we are on our way to the ski day at uh, Granos. And we're uh, a little late and we're a little tired uh, after the Global Fiesta yesterday. But we're uh, looking forward to, um, to skiing and uh, what yeah. will happen there, we think? Um, <laughs> we, I don't know. <laughs> Ski day is a day that where we take the, the uh, participants ski at uh, Granosen here uh, outside Trondheim and it's a day where the participants get to know each other in another way than that they do in the workshops. They can, uh, can try skiing and other winter sports activities, have fun, uh, relax. You can uh, look at it as a uh, long ice-breaking uh, energizer or, or something. Enjoying yourself? Oh yeah. yeah, it's crazy fun and this is a hard sport. <laughs> yeah, yeah I bet you're doing good. <laughs> Thanks. The first time? Uh-huh, yeah. first time in snow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm from India, so. Okay, no snow. No. <laughs> Insane fun. Walking up is crazy, at least coming down is like, whee! <laughs> so, yeah. That's good. Make the 11 again, yeah. I had to stitch. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm teaching her because she's never never seen we went before? skiing before. Yeah, and yeah. You tried? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So trying to make the eleven at first. Trying to make the eleven. <laughs> uh, what is the eleven? Is it the, the I mean, just like make eleven. Yeah. And then if you want to start like making, <laughs> this yeah, is amazing. Yeah, I heard about the A. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> How's it going? Ah, very interesting. Very interesting. Is it yeah. difficult? Um, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. First time skiing. Ah, yeah. yes. It was it was it was my first time snowing because yeah. I come from Peru. Okay. And in Peru, we don't see snow and no. we don't see rain, so <laughs> everything is new right here. Yeah. What did you enjoy the most? Uh, falling down. Whoa. <laughs> Yes. And the trainers, uh, it's very nice. Very nice. Very, uh, yeah. And teach me a lot of skills. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I need a, a time to, uh, to understand that. Yeah. <laughs> but I've do not, I've been doing a lot of snow fighting these days. Yeah. <laughs> not only here, just like in the streets, in the middle yeah, of the street. Yeah. Yeah. Do anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Need some help? Oh no, I just uh, have a rest. Oh yeah, okay then. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, ha I enjoy a lot of the, all the activities we have in, at the workshop. Yep. And uh, well, I really love yesterday. Yeah. Of, uh, global a, Fiesta. Yeah. Well, I was uh, dancing like a crazy girl yeah. in, front of, uh, in the front row. I was asking if there is any handsome boys. Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and not only like uh, Eastwood participants, also Norwegians. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I've noticed that some of the girls have a, uh, um, are really interested in the first in Eastwood president. Uh. I don't know why. <laughs> I know. Okay, we need to get apart from each other so we're able to get up. <laughs> Do you like this? 
Snow? Yeah, yeah, of course. Snow is amazing. Uh, where are you from? Uh, I'm from New York. Okay. Yeah. So you have been skiing before? Uh, no, um, never no? skiing. I, I'm, I'm gonna go later today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how, how do you like Isfit so far? It's been perfect. <laughs> Everyone is talking and getting along. Yeah. Very peaceful. Yeah, what did you like most? Uh, so far? So far. Um, the fiesta last night was really fun. Yes. Um, and I think the plenary sessions are, are amazing. They have okay. really good speakers yeah. and also a lot of very insightful students to ask them the follow-up questions. I think those okay. two have been my favorites. Okay. What's your name? Sigurd. Sigurd. Okay. I think Isfit would absolutely not be the same without all this craziness, without, without the, the pony song and the crazy energizers and, and the activities that are really ice-breaking and get the participants to know each other in another way. On the last Saturday of Isfit, I had the pleasure to talk to uh, Björn Blindheim, which is one of the founders of Isfit and was a board member at the uh, first Isfit is 1990. He attended the last plenary session with uh, Betty Williams, where first Betty Williams addressed the audience, and afterwards a lot of participants uh, entered uh, the floor before the stage and danced to a band that played. And Bjorn came up to me after that and said, oh, Isfit is fantastic. I mean, where else in the world can you first listen to a Nobel Peace Prize laureate and then see students from the whole world dancing together in pure joy. And I think what he says really capture the essence of, of Isfit, the unique mix between highly relevant speakers and, and topics and kind of the, the serious conference part and the joy and the energy that we have here. Yesterday I went to the uh, fa 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 FAPNET indie, indie band, indie pop band in Kluben fa FAPNET, FAPNET, yeah. FAPNET And I think it was really cool, yeah. it was great This bit is just mind-boggling Each and every function being that's being held in Sampo now yeah. We are enjoying a lot yeah. This fit is just so inspiring. This fit is actually worth applying for. I uh, think 2009 became much more than we could dream of and could expect. Yeah, actually, actually, it's, it's really amazing. Every, everything is good in this festival. I have been in, in some festivals before. Uh, I, th this festival is really special because meeting people from at, around the world from more than 100 countries. People from different nations teach me a lot. Yeah. You know, I met some people from countries that I, I, it's the first time to, to hear this, this yeah, to hear about them. Well, a lot of hanging around with different people and having a lot of interesting conversations. Like, yes, just going around and, oh, you're from Peru, oh, you speak Spanish, oh, I'm, uh, I've been in Peru last year, and I love it. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I start to talk like that for an hour, yeah, it was yeah. great. A lot of different highlights, a lot of different stories. And, uh, I, 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 I absolutely loved it. We met like the, the Nobel Prize uh, holders, yeah. like Tutu. Yeah. Uh, you hear different language, uh, you change experiences. And we share a lot of ideas, and I've tried to discover all the cultures, of the way of thinking, yeah. of the, and music. So it's very good. I'm 
so much different opinions between us. Yeah. The major thing was uh, that I learned from Eastfit, it was the teamwork. You are nothing if you are alone. You can do everything if you uh, have a team and you uh, have a unity. I think it's an amazing experience and um, I think everything we do is so much fun and they give us no time for like they even breathe so it's like this and that and lunch and then meeting and then talk and workshop so yeah the feel of cordiality the friendliness and i must say no norwegians are so sweet and very nice i like norway so much and i'm really curious to saw trondheim in the summer so yeah, i think yeah. that i'm coming in the summer you're coming in the summer yeah, yeah. i yeah. hope so yeah. i'm having a wonderful time i wish that uh, uh, you know, there wasn't so much slush out there, <laughs> but I brought a pair of boots. Uh, Norwegian food, that is too much. I thought it was going to be a lot colder or that I'd be outdoors more. So I borrowed a thick woolen cap with ear flaps. You don't like the food? No, no, yeah. well, I like food. Uh, but uh, that you is. You get more. used to. Yeah, uh, because Norwegian we are not used food, to yes. Norwegian food, that's yeah. why there is some problem. But I love the chocolate. It's yeah. delicious. Yes, chocolate. <laughs> yeah, the chocolate. And a scarf, woolen scarf that sort of wraps itself around me like a python. Tonight, are you going to any concert? Or? Oh, tonight, actually, I'm just a bit under the weather and I'm tired. Yeah. So. But I was about to leave when I had them play reggae, reggae and I'm yeah. a reggae fan, so yeah. I was just dancing to the reggae too. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think yeah. that is also part of the uniqueness of the festival. You come out and you want to go out but something draws yeah. you back in. So draws I think, you back in. Yeah. Yes. I think ISFIT is a, is a really um, great initiative and there should be more initiatives like this. I, I really enjoy seeing a lot of students coming together from all over the world with different backgrounds, different cultural, religious, political points of view and to meet and to share. I absolutely loved it and I, uh, I, don't, want, I, I don't want it to end. Mm -hmm. The cultural program at ISFIT is thought through and it's an important aspect of the festival. Without the cultural program, ISFIT would not be what it is and it would not be a festival in the same way. It affects your emotions, it affects your thoughts in a totally different way than the plenary sessions and the, the workshops do. Also the cultural events are important arenas where the participants can relax, get to know each other in another way and just hang out, have fun. An important part of ISFIT's cultural program is the performing arts. At ISFIT 2009 you could attend performances such as Poetry Slam with GODS, Jazz Creatures combining puppet theatre for children with jazz music, the controversial British actress and performance artist Kate Pendry, Night Days, especially written for the festival, Disney Killer, Music and Poetry by Gunnar Varnes, and several other performances. And my topic's religion, and from I come from a country like India, so we have so many religions. So it's nice to hear what others have to say about the same thing, because we've discussed it over and over again in our country. And it's nice to know what other countries feel about the same thing, so it's a good thing. The participants in Workshop 9 belong to several different religions, and some were atheists. Religion can be a hard topic to discuss because it's very personal. The debates often got heated and this demanded respect and open minds between the participants. People come from many different uh, you know, religions, many different countries, so 
I learned a lot about their perspectives, their points of view, or about uh, religion itself. We do some uh, several discussions and debates about how to use religion as a media of uh, building peace. That's you know uh, some co conflicts are co uh, caused by uh, the reli religious reason. You know sometimes people use religion as a an excuse for uh, like uh, things like a war. They use uh, sometimes they use religion as a reason. So by creating a better understanding, we can avoid the uh, like a crash. And so we can start to avoid conflict that causes by uh, misunderstanding in religions. Many thought it would help to face discriminating statements with more ease, and they all agreed that the common values of the different religions should be used as a foundation for peace. Well, I don't know if art itself is a peace builder, but I think that the artists that uses the tool uh, of art, because art is an international language, and it, uh, it, it talks and it communicates uh, through borders and boundaries and languages. I think we we managed to uh, to create an art program that is was very varied and very uh, uh, very good. Uh, from from day one, uh, one of our, our goals was to not just to to collect an art program that was uh, cool or or beautiful. In Gallery Kit, we uh, had uh, two exhibitions. Uh, one with a Georgian uh, artist called Maka Batyashvili from Georgia. Um, the reason why we uh, we picked Maka is, was because of uh, Georgia being uh, one of the the, the conflict areas that uh, the dialogue groups focused uh, on. Maka Batyashvili is, has a unique uh, painting style, very uh, childish and very you can say simple and, and strange and uh, and really really beautiful. The the motives are not uh, dramatic or uh, or something like that. It's it's common motives from just a normal day's life in, in Georgia. The other exhibition in Gallery Kits was curated by the Norwegian artist Henrik Plakt, who has established the International Academy of Arts in Palestine. My name is Henrik Plakt. Uh, I'm a very old Norwegian artist. Uh, and I've been invited here to ISFIT. First of all, to uh, give a lecture about uh, an uh, initiative that I uh, uh, initiated in 2002, and that's to establish an academy of, of fine arts in Ramallah, which is the uh, occupied Palestinian uh, land, uh, to tell a brief story about the uh, establishment. and. Uh, and also to you know uh, encourage students to take initiatives such as this one to intervene in uh, in conflicts uh, and to have visions and to uh, to uh, to try to help or to contribute. Sharif Mokhed's movie Checkpoint: Fashion for Israeli Checkpoints documents the thousands of moments where the Palestinians attempt to move through the intricate and constantly expanding network of Israeli checkpoints. The clothes worn by the mannequins are designed so that the people who wear them are easy to frisk. I think the students can see a small glimpse of uh, of the of the uh, Palestinian identity. I would say mm. a little bit about their state of mind living under occupation. that are here are the tomorrow's leaders mm. and uh, those in power of how to change the world. Yeah. So I think it's important that art is represented in a place like this. Yeah. Well, I don't know if 
art itself uh, is uh, peace builder, but I think that the artists uh, that uses the tool uh, of art, because art is an international language and it, uh, it, it talks and it communicates uh, through borders and boundaries and languages. Uh, and I think it also represents a neutral space, I would say. We wanted to, to show uh, the public in, in Trondheim, uh, Isvit, and we wanted to, to make a spectacular, um, a spectacular event. 19 different motifs made by both local and foreign artists were projected on the facades of Nidarosdomen and a lot of people witnessed this unique art project. Me and uh, Andrew, the head of the concert, uh, we we made a a package for Nidos because Andrew wanted to to have a a concert uh, there as well. So our plan was to to make an evening with uh, the Paint My House and the concert in in Nidos uh, which uh, was. Uh, Probably the one of the best uh, days in uh, in my life. <laughs> Yeah, it was a fantastic uh, performance by Magnet. I, uh, the sounds and the and the atmosphere was was electric with this with this music. The combination between the Paint My House project and the Magnet concert in the cathedral. Uh, made a unique combination and uh, to look at the old cathedral with its new uh, paintings on it was a really uh, great experience and opened my eyes uh, on how we can use art in the public space. It was really a beautiful uh, show. Uh, the concert was fantastic, I think. I think the Nidaros Cathedral it was a wonderful uh, concert hall. There were uh, 1,300 people in the cathedral, so it was uh, full and uh, was a great mix between expert participants, uh, students of Trondheim and others that wanted to, to share this experience. People took notice when you walked in all right Not easy to miss your innocent why a little per se perhaps but mirror mirror on the wall there were held several concerts every night at Isfits, both at Samfuna and other places in Trondheim. Here are some of the bands and artists. I guess you're gonna be the last to leave tonight and leave your little of your make believe to daylight. Guess you're gonna be the last to leave tonight And leave a little of your make-believe to daylight Oh, daylight Yeah, daylight And in the one talking, the mile a minute talk 
13 to the dozen of I told you so Just like there are some Isfitters that have never seen snow, yeah. some have never seen uh, the desert. Yeah. I was invited by Isfit to to have a show in this peace building festival. Oh, and normally I'm a, I'm a documentary photographer, but the, the, the problem with photos is it shows the world how it is instead mm. of the world how it should be or could okay. be. Yeah. And the Isfit festival is about dreaming, Mm. About about the world as it can be, and and the theme is building peace. Yeah. So I decided to bring the land where the problems are to the people of Norway because okay. the participants they come yeah. they talk in workshops they talk in places that are far away from where the yeah. the action is happening. Yeah. First of all, I thought it would be a nice uh, contrast with the with the snow yeah. outside. Just like there are some isfitters that have never seen snow. Yeah. Some have never seen uh, the desert, and the desert is uh, Israel and Palestine have many different climates, uh. but I chose the desert because that is where the prophets have come up with their greatest peaceful prophecies, mm. from the Bible, the New Testament, Muhammad, mm. all the prophets. They went to the, the desert to talk to God. There must be something there. Yeah. So that's that why I chose that uh, that environment. I think it's great uh, to, um, to try to uh, you know, be in, uh, in the country that's, uh, that you're talking about because um, uh, you're always trying to discuss peace and, and, uh, and negotiate uh, in, uh, in cold countries like in Norway. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's um, for us that's never been there. It's, yeah. Maybe we can understand some more and try to put ourselves in their position. All the drawings around have been made by the people that have visited our gallery. Okay. We invite people to come in for an experience, not to... It's not, I'm the artist and I'm telling you how to build peace. It's we together are going to, to think about it. And the students have come from all over the world for that purpose. So they come in, they drink coffee, uh, Arab coffee or, or tea and they eat uh, hummus, uh, falafel and pitas. Mm -hmm. The tea and the falafels are uh, amazing. It looks like Swedish meatballs, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's not. <laughs> it's great. They relax, first of all, they smoke yeah. some uh, shisha, you know, and, then, and, and after they've, they've relaxed and uh, made new friends, uh, then we ask them together to make a write an, or draw an idea for peace in the, in the, in the land yeah. and to make it uh, a collaboration to work together with somebody yeah. else okay. because peace is very easy <laughs> when you're doing it by yourself yeah. the point is a communication with somebody else and that's also the the hard part but, yeah. but that's the the point nonviolence is the weapon of the strong not the weak the plenary session called Everybody's Business was arranged like a traditional meeting in the Great Hall at Samfuna. The meeting is in session. <laughs> to introduce the meeting were Björn Blindheim and Jaran Rista, who started the first ISFIT festival. Well, Aran, this was how it all started, right? On the bike. Yes, you're right. The idea was born on a bike trip from just outside this building, actually. We simply wanted to bring people together from different backgrounds to meet, to discuss, and to develop perspectives on important issues which concerned us all. Diverse groups give interesting results, right? Um, so a little bit of background. It was uh, sort of end of the Cold War. Uh, Europe was still divided. And I really remember the summer of 1989, discussing with other crew in, in, the, in the board um, 
on the program. So we were sort of putting together the program for the first festival. We had just got budget for sending out the brochure. That was everything we had. Um, and we were discussing when will the Berlin Wall be torn down. This was July 1989, and we decided not to include it because we wanted to be taken serious. Uh, little did we know of the avalanche of history that rolled over Europe just months after, and melted the Cold War down just in front of us. It was really a fantastic fall. Uh, country after country uh, finally broke out from the Soviet Union. And just a few weeks after the country broke out, we got hundreds of applicants for each of the country. But I remember I sat once with one East and one West German guy, and they were discussing what was written in their history books at school. And would you believe it? It was very, very different. It was, of course, some surprises for the people coming out from this part of the world. <laughs> for example, the currency rates. I remember one guy from Estonia working hard for six months, he told me, to save money for the festival. He came here with 60 Norwegian kroner. He went to the toilet to take a piss. That was 10 kroner at the train station. But now let's turn to ISFI 2009. How are the guys doing? Yes, how are you doing? How many of you have had interesting and eye-opening discussions this week? Hand in the... So we are extremely proud and extremely impressed by what has happened since this start and are so happy to be back and see how this has grown. So people, so, humble thank you. Humble thank you to all of you. Thank you. Please give a warm welcome to Mrs. Patty Williams. It makes me very proud to be in this room. And I'm not saying that any kind of, like I'll say I'm proud just because you know, I'm supposed to. It's not true. Trondheim University is leading the world in how we bring to the fore the issues of those in the world who suffer. And it's young people helping young people. How wonderful is that? Because if you're gonna wait for the adults to do it, you'll all be dead. <laughs> Here are young people who are taking the future of the world into their own hands and they're saying to those in power, I hate that word power too, because it destroys so many people, power. They're looking at those who are powerful. And if we collectively come together with people of like mind, like what's happening here in Tron time is people of like mind are getting together with people of like mind worldwide. That's a wonderful thing to do. And to the two men who started this, God bless you both. Look what you've done. When the peace movement started, I had been out that day shopping. I just didn't stand up one morning and say, oh goodness, I think we should have peace in Northern Ireland. This peace that we have now on my beloved island of Ireland was one that was born out of brutality and suffering and the suffering of the women and the children of Ireland. I had seen many people killed in Northern Ireland. I had two of my own family killed. My cousin Danny, who was a pre-med student from a family of eight, the brightest one in the whole family, and he was the one who was gonna be a doctor. Well, he took a job at the weekends in a bar, serving drinks to earn money like students do, and coming home that night, one night on a Saturday night, they, the Protestant paramilitary organization, organization were lying in wait for Danny, and they riddled him to death with the sign of the cross. My cousin Joe had a little farm, I made a couple of acres, but he was gonna have a big farm someday, and in the meantime, he was working in the post office as a postman, and every night he would go up and feed his animals, and he loved that farm, 18 years of age. Driving past a van, the van exploded. They couldn't open Joe's coffin. There were two of my family destroyed for no sane reason in the world. One destroyed by the IRA, a Catholic, and the other destroyed by a Protestant paramilitary organization. So the pain within my own family was intense. 
And then one day I was driving home from my mother's and I witnessed the death of three beautiful children. I say this everywhere I go. You don't see my angels, but I believe in angels. Because around my shoulders tonight are John, Joanne, and Andrew McGuire. My John, Joanne, and Andrew didn't die in vain. In fact, it says on their gravestone, they died that others may live. And that's the truth. Sorry. <laughs> and I went home and, and about four hours of my life went missing. I've got no idea what happened in those four hours. And I don't think I'll ever get them back. And maybe I don't really want to get them back because it was painful. But my next memory was standing in my garage and I was screaming. Well, a psychiatrist told me since that that I probably brought myself out of shock, which was good because it would probably would have cost me a fortune to get out of it any other way. You know? <laughs> and the first door I banged on, this lady came to the door and I was yelling at her, you know, we can't live like this anymore. We women have to change. I mean, I was on fire on her doorstep. And I held a piece of paper up and I said, there, sign this. And she said, what am I signing? And I wrote on it, peace petition. And then that night, it was like being the Pipe Piper of Hamelin. All I did, really all I did, was give a voice to the women who were thinking exactly the same as I was. 10,000 women who had seen me on television hired bosses. And in one powerful act of, you want to know why I love hugs? Let me tell you why I love hugs. That day, the Catholic women buses were coming this way, and the Protestant buses were coming this way. Those women didn't speak to each other when they got off the bus. They hugged. And in one powerful act of love, because that's what it was, we women wiped out 850 years of hatred in one powerful act of love. Arms are for hugging. We used to do training sessions, non-violent training sessions. Non-violence is the weapon of the strong, not the weak. When I heard I was coming to Trondheim, I got so excited. And one of the students said to me, why, why did you come here? I said, why, why not? Why didn't you ask me earlier? I'm going to be back here. I've got a feeling. If you'll have me. Okay. Sports and games are a part of almost all societies and it can function as a bridge builder between conflicting groups. Uh, yeah, we are, we are doing sports games and we have uh, discussions. We play football, but uh, in some teams we were tied up together with hands or legs or uh, hands behind the back and that made it, uh, the teams unequal which is quite much related to the situation around the world. Yeah, and how about yesterday? Did you participate in the ski day? Of course! We <laughs> love it! Especially... I, I never fell down. <laughs> <laughs> this was the first time, but never fell. I don't believe you. I don't believe you! I, I don't guess believe I saw you. you. <laughs> uh, well, I have had... This workshop is very much related to my studies, and I'm really happy to be here, and I try to get a lot of things to bring back home. And, and uh, I'm studying circus. Yes, I hope we can also find some uh, projects we can do together in future. I think we can be good at that. And we get there to a cabin surrounded by just snow and mostly nothing else. Misfit 97 started 
a project called the ISFET Dialogue Groups. At the Dialogue Groups we gather students from both sides of different conflicts. Uh, and we bring them first to Oslo for a couple of days, then to a cabin at Røros for 10 days, and then they participate here at the Festival of ISFET. The participants for Dialogue Groups 2009 came from Georgia and Abkhazia, uh, Israel and Palestine, and north and south, south of Cyprus. This is uh, one of the evenings in Oslo when we went ice skating together, one of the first nights. It's a great, great experience or, and how to get to know each other, falling around, mm -hmm. laughing. This is at the Nobel Peace Prize Center. Uh, we take a bus to Rodos. It takes about eight hours and we get there to a cabin surrounded by just snow and mostly nothing else and spend Ten days locked up in a cabin together. Um, inside there's different sessions, workshops, um, different uh, dialogue exercises as we call them, different communication exercises and different topics. Here the participants have been given an assignment uh, which is about identity and they're asked to draw themselves or get someone else to draw around themselves and inside the brother they should place different parts of their ident identity, mm -hmm. things that are important to them. It can be where they're from, uh, what religion they have, mm -hmm. if they're a student, if they play drums, whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, identity is a very important topic or issue in conflict, uh, especially civil conflicts when people live with in the same state. And this is kind of an exercise to see that you have many different Part of your identity, not just the one that goes about is about the conflict. We spend a lot of time in the snow, uh, skiing, uh, making snow angels. This is the view from our cabin. Is the dialogue group continues as a workshop during the festival? In the workshops, the participants started working with uh, their own projects, uh, developing and their own project, thinking of ideas of what they could do in their own home communities when they get back home. And also they met many many speakers, uh, like Johan Galtung. It was very popular among the participants, so that was a great experience. The Yes for Dialogue groups is, our, is one of our m most direct peace initiatives. Hopefully they learn a different way to understand the other party of the conflict. Hopefully they learn something new about themselves. They learn about communication uh, and they learn a bit about how it is to be from the other side mm -hmm. as a person. The dialogue groups can be an intense experience, especially for people that haven't met anyone from the other side before. But it is intense and you yeah. do see that there is conflict. The participants are there because there are conflicts. So. Yeah, there is a challenge with dialogue when the participants have newly experienced war which was the case in both Georgia Abkhazia and especially the Israeli-Palestine group. I think um, through dialogue and through meeting each other and talking together and doing what the dialogue groups do, like sharing, sharing the same food, sharing the same area to sleep, spending your days together playing in the snow, uh, it's essential for people to get to know each other as persons and not just the enemy. I think it's amazing to see the change that some of the participants went through. Yeah, several participants have come back to us after the seminar especially and said that it did change the way they thought about the conflict and the way they saw the other side. But this is also a long process. In uh, August we will have a follow-up seminar in Cyprus all the with all the participants. It's a follow-up seminar to help them in the process of developing their own projects. We were proud of the fact that our participants are, all the groups with participants are working with projects as we speak, and we look forward to seeing them again in Cyprus in a couple of months. Jimmy was the oldest of three brothers at the farm. The reason why we chose peace building as the main theme of ISFIT 2009 is because it's an international challenge, and to build peace in the troubled areas around the world we need international cooperation and we need student activism. Meeting uh, other students, fellow students personally and listening to their stories can be really enlightening and you can hear the personal stories and get another insight that you can get 
through textbooks or, or lectures at your own university or through the media. I, I met an Israeli guy and we talked about uh, about peace and how can we solve uh, our conflict. When, when I heard about some conflicts in the world and then they, they find a solution for it. Yes. So I was curious to know what kind of solution yeah. that will help and that will solve the conflicts. Yeah. I asked many, many friends from the conflict, the areas of conflict yeah. about how, can, how how is the life there and uh, how did you find the solution. So yeah, I'm now thinking about some new uh, kind of solutions for our yeah. conflict. I talked to uh, a lot of the participants of ISFA 2009 during the last days and I was extremely happy to hear that they told me that they have, they feel they have changed a little bit and they feel that they have uh, learned a lot during ISFIT. A participant told me that he felt almost uh, like a new person after ISFIT and, and it might sound like a cliche when you say that ISFIT changed my life, but I think for the participants at least uh, a little change is made. No one can build peace alone. Jessica from Colombia cannot build peace on her own. And Pascal from Burundi cannot build peace on his own. Muhammad from Bangladesh cannot build peace on his own. And Alexander from, from Germany cannot build peace alone. To build peace, dialogue and cooperation across borders are essential. To build peace, innovative ideas and wholehearted positive attitudes are invaluable. To build peace, a long-term perspective is needed. Here at ISFIT, Jessica, Pascal, Muhammad and Alexander can find the ideas that makes successful peace building possible. Together, they can build peace. We are gathered here today because peace is more than the absence of war. We are gathered here because we want to contribute to build a future a future where people can live in peace. Hi, I'm Shamim. I'm from Workshop 13. It's uh, about women, women equality. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, our workshop was uh, to give equality to women. Yeah. In society, you can say that most of countries uh, in which people uh, uh, oppress women. So uh, our purpose was to find out uh, how we can bring women equal to men so that they are given equality in the society. So we came into the, uh, uh, you can say, conclusion that uh, we will have to establish the justice uh, so that every per each and every person in a society will be given equal rights. Individually, I will uh, start from my family. I will try to uh, give rights to my wife my family in my family to my mothers my sisters uh, and i will start from my family because uh, individually i can do this one we should think for others in the same way as we think for ourselves yeah i i am i am actually despite all all appearances i am a, i am a little tired but each time i meet up with young people hey i <laughs> I think an important uh, part of why the, our speakers want to come here is that at ISFIT they, they meet an audience that they do not meet anywhere else. And I tell this to students everywhere, I go, my favourite thing to do is be with young people. I love young people, children and dogs. It's adults I have a problem with. <laughs> they give me a new energy. You really are wonderful. Did you know that? You're fantastic. Hey? Around the world, uh, students are doing great work for, for peace and democracy and human rights. And, and students are a group that is really resourceful and that can, can create a lot of changes around the world. We have many examples. In the year 2000, thousands of students took to the streets of Belgrade to remove Slobodan Milosevic. When elections and international pressure did not suffice, the courageous students gave the Milosevic regime its final blow. We can all remember the iconic picture of the brave Chinese students 
who refused to let the army tanks pass him during the student demonstration in Tiananmen Square. That remarkable moment of television history left us with enduring images of student courage. I need a lot the energy of young people and, uh, how I can say, their point of view. They always believe in a positive change. They have a hope that others might not have. ISFIT can inspire people which are, in turn will go back to their own countries and spread the message and hence like if young people get involved because after a few years we will be the ones who will be ruling the country or, be, or we will be the ones who will be ruled. So if we have awareness and we have the right awareness I think we can change the present world and live in a better world. We are going to manage this world in, in the coming years. I plan to run for Prime Minister of Canada for example. Um, as students, we have a great possibility to influence the world around us. Without knowledge, you cannot change anything. Without knowledge about the situation that you want to change, and knowledge about how you can change it, your effort will be in vain. Students are acquiring knowledge. Reading and listening to the experts are essential, but being a student is also about learning through experience. To build foundations for change and development, students must meet. The creativity that students around the world have is a force that few other groups possess. The cynics may call us naive dreamers, but students do never stop to dream about a better future. Well, um, I'd like to use the knowledge that I've gained here um, for, for more effective thinking. And I think that I've already gained enough from, from, from not only my friends, but also the workshop leaders who have contributed greatly to, uh, to the workshop. We hope that through uh, participating in ISFIT, the participants can uh, build international networks with other students from, from the whole world that they can use even either in their career or in their personal life when they get home and after ISFIT. I'm into youth development and I'm a youth development advocate back at home. Yeah, so I, I have learned so many skills which I think will add up to, to the already good work I'm doing back at home. We also hope that they get some new ideas and inspiration to continue their work on international issues and we hope that they can get their attitudes challenged. These 10 days have probably been much more and much more knowledgeable than, than a whole year at a university. Years later, while you're just looking through your photo albums, of course, given that there will be any albums by then, given how digital everything's become, <laughs> you would remember these days as the fondest times. And keep your friendship ties. These friendships will bring you closer in the future. I wish success for all of you. The Student Peace Prize is awarded to a student or a student organization that have made a remarkable effort for peace, democracy, and human rights. Students, ladies and gentlemen, first, I want to say that I'm so touched by your hospitality and the way you have received me here in Trondheim. It has really been a great week 
And this evening has been really amazing. Thank you so much for this. I am extremely humble when I stand in front of you today. This is a moment and this is a price that I believe that um, I am sharing with all my fellow Sahrawi students and with all my brothers and sisters in Western Sahara. Many of those Sahrawis have suffered and sacrificed much more than I have. Many Sahrawis have also worked harder than I have and for a longer time. So when I receive this prize, I dedicate it to the Sahrawi students and young pupils. It is now 33 years since the, colo the colonial power Spain left my home country, Western Sahara. Instead of independence, we were occupied by Morocco. To this day, Morocco has still not established a single university in Western Sahara. For Sahrawis who want to study, we have to travel to Morocco. There, Sahrawi students suffer from various forms of discrimination. This prize has made, um, this prize has made it possible for me to speak for the Sahrawi cause to a large international audience. For that, I am very grateful, grateful to the Student Peace Prize Committee and to organizers of the ISFIT Festival. Perhaps it can help to draw the attention to the Sahrawi political prisoners, to the more than 500 Sahrawis have disappeared in Moroccan prisons, to the humani humanitarian crisis in the Sahrawi refugees, refugee camps in Algeria, and to the international companies to, that help Morocco plunder Western Sahara. I hope we can continue our struggle together in the future. And I would like to thank you so much. Thank you. And Fidikar, or the Snuff Grinders, is a show with a combination of uh, Norwegian traditional dance um, and Brazilian capoeira and modern break dance. The show was performed in the Grand Hall uh, and a full Grand Hall watched on Saturday night, the last Saturday. The atmosphere in the Grand Hall was uh, fantastic and the dancers had to come back on stage twice to dance more to, to please the audience. So it was a wonderful uh, last show in the Grand Hall. On Monday evening, several hundreds of the participants and volunteers and citizens of Trondheim attended the silent walk. The attendees bore lit torches and walked in a long procession between Samfuna and Nidarostomen. Walking together in the dark and silence contributed to a peaceful atmosphere. The crowd gathered around Nidarostomen and a ceremony was arranged inside where the Student Peace Prize laureate Alcoria Rabab Amidan talked of her background and her appreciation to be there. Afterwards, people, regardless of belief, were encouraged to light candles, meditate and share the reflections in the unique surroundings of the church. Accompanied by organ music, this became a memorable experience. I was just wondering, how do you feel about ISFIT so far? Well, I feel, I feel pretty comfortable. Mm -hmm. One of the main like barriers I found is language. 
Okay. Yeah. But that's not enough. I, I mean, we communicate through peace and love. Our house, right? <laughs> yeah. And our ho home is your home, and your country is my country. Your con my country is already my country. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> you know, it's. I think uh, it's served for the sharing everything. You know, we are all human, and we are all living in the same planet, and we should uh, share. I thought we were going to stand up and dance, but then I have to try and behave like an archbishop. Uh, <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Maurice from Grenada, which is right here. It's right just above Venezuela and Canada. We are from Cyprus, yeah, the, 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 the little <laughs> island like, like... Great work to all the organizers, president, secretary, all the volunteers, the hosts, everything. It was really good.
place fit and I love all the people and it's so much lovely people. Very, very, very intelligent students. There it is, under the Turkey, upside of the Egypt and left side of the, what the hell. So please, all volunteers of ISFIT 2009 and Samfuna, please stand up. We are really happy to be here. And we were from Dallas group. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah we were in Brayro. <laughs> one time, full city, nice place, a lot of fun. Chill out. Everything is wrong. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Hello, um, this is Anas from Jordan. And this is my first time in, in ESFIT. Peace building, peace building is, is a great topic because it gathers topics that uh, matter to human beings. What I want to talk about right now is it's related to um, how to get peace. For me, peace means, first of all, to find inner peace within ourselves. Like before we, we could make peace to others, we can make peace with our inner selves. It is really sad how nowadays you can see how the media, you know, I, I believe that media plays, you know, is, is like a two-edged uh, sword that has the good and the bad. And in order for us to be role models and in order for us to make real inner peace to ourselves, we need to follow good examples and not whatever we see on TV. Thanks for this fit and thanks to the people of Trondheim.